All right, hello and welcome to the five o'clock tour. You're a little bit early. We are not done. We're not ready for you yet, but stay tuned. Enjoy some refreshments. They're free if they're in your own <laughs> fridge as we finish getting all of this ready for you. <laughs> Oh, also, you guys are going to get some awesome free plans today, so stay tuned. Yeah. I don't want to stay here, no. Ain't going to keep it low now. If you want to go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. I just got an awesome... All right, this is the new bandsaw. It's a Rikon 14-inch. It's really nice. I got it at Rockler. First time I've ever been in a Rockler store. It was really neat. Picked up a couple of cool things, but... Anyway, let's get this thing unboxed. What you just watched was us trying to put it up on this little lift and move it. And, and the base bent. The base broke. We had some wheels on there. Arguably the wheels were a little too big, but that's not the point. The fact of the matter is that the base is made out of really low quality Chinesium metal. Yes. And the little bracket that the wheel bolts into just bent. The well At first broke. I thought it was the wheel because we had to use the ones where it's like with the post that goes up through and then you fold it down. But like- That broke. And again, that's another reason that we don't take tool sponsors. If we got this bandsaw for free, I would probably be more inclined to just say, oh, well, it was my fault. You know, I, mm -hmm. I put the wrong wheels on it. But no, you should be able to use and abuse a tool in a workshop environment and do something wrong with it. And not have it completely break. We're talking like it almost welds, fell over. Yeah. welds completely broke. I don't know if you saw in the time lapse, but like it almost fell over. If mm -hmm. I didn't yell for Jenny to grab it and hold it, it was yeah, going to fall two over. Of us. So, Anyway, yeah, I was kind of stupid for putting those big wheels on it, but at the same time, the tool should be built more sturdy than that. So uh, we're, we're going to build, build our own base. Yeah. So that we, definitely won't break. <laughs> and we've got to finish up some other stuff. So we're going to run to Home Depot real quick. And we're like the 18th time this week, but that's okay. We'll see you soon.
Thank you for your patience. We're just about ready to get started with the tour today. But before we get started, please take a look at our gift shop. You might find a shirt that you like. Or a mug. It helps support the channel. It looks really cool. At least we think so anyway. Uh, yeah, Especially definitely check it out. Texas. Yeah, we know there's a lot of you in Texas now. Yes. We've all reached out and said welcome to the state. Thank you guys so much. Let's get started. All right, here we go. We're about to start. The waiting's over. Put down your refreshments. Let's get to it. So, this is the entrance from our house. And we walk out this way. And here she is. Okay, so we'll start in this corner. This is our two horsepower dust collector. It is from Harbor Freight. We had the exact same one in our old shop, if you remember, but we just didn't have enough room to stick it in our trailer and move it all the way down here. So we ended up selling it before we left North Dakota and we bought a new one as soon as we got down here. So we put it in this corner because the majority of our tools that would need dust collection were on this side of the garage. So this was really the only location where it was the most centrally located that required the least amount of plumbing and tubes everywhere to make it work. the only adaptation we made to this dust collector is we switched out this filter bag here on top. This is the PowerTech one. Uh, we also did this at our last shop also. We just think it works a little bit better. Um, it gets some of those fine particles out a little bit better than the bag it came with does. And this doesn't need to be completely sterile, this shop. Um, we're just trying to make it comparable to being outside or being in the house. And this one does help out a lot with that. All right, so we're just gonna take a lap this direction around the shop and go over every tool. This is our router table that you just watched us build. Came out a lot bigger than I was expecting, but that's not a bad thing. We still, we have room for it and it's a really nice surface. So we'll be able to get some bigger tabletops and stuff here to the router table instead of having to fiddle with changing bits in a smaller portable router, even though we have that too. Anyway, it's not completed yet. I still have to do the fence and the T-track and all that fun business. That's why all this is here. So the dust collection isn't completely hooked up yet. If we needed to use a bit that had a bearing on top, we could totally use it. Everything works great. Uh, really happy with how this came out. This has got our old Bosch router. It's the Bosch 1617 EBS model. It's a workhorse for us, but it really needs to be mounted at a table. It's just too big and unwieldy. I, so we picked up a small trim router, which we'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, that's what router is mounted in this table. And we have the Craig router lift in here. It's just well worth the money to get a precision uh, piece of equipment that you can raise and lower the bit. That's got a little dial that shows you how high you're raising and lowering it with the crank handle. It's just, it's just really nice. After coming to the one that I made myself, the little bit of plexiglass and plywood, this one is much, much nicer. So it'll be a lot quicker for us as we're doing production stuff. All right, so this is our Rikon 14 inch uh, 10324 bandsaw that we just got. So brand new, we haven't gotten to use it a whole lot, um, but what little we've done with it, just testing it out, we do like it. I think it's the same one that David Picciuto has, not positive, but I think so. Uh, yeah, so if you remember, this was one of the tools we did sell before we left our old shop. Again, we just didn't have room for our old bandsaw and we weren't a huge fan of it. Like it was good, it helped us get off the ground and everything, but we knew when we got to a new shop, we were like, we just wanna get a new one regardless. Cause essentially what we need is a resaw machine. We just need something that does really well with ripping down large pieces to do cutting boards, smaller tabletops, whatever, coasters, smaller table legs. And then our last bandsaw just wasn't quite precise enough in resawing and it definitely did not have a fence. So this one we're hoping just boosts our accuracy and being able to make very straight cuts and resawing exactly the way we need it to. 
Um, the only unfortunate thing is the base did end up breaking on this. It came with kind of like a thin metal base, but while we were lifting the entire thing up this little ramp that's here on the floor of our garage, it, it bent the base and it broke the welds, unfortunately. So we did end up having to build our own base, which you can see below and we have footage of it. Um, but it's kind of nice because it does offer some storage for blades and everything like that. But it's just a little more durable and we were able to customize the height that the saw was at. And we like it a little bit lower like this because like I said, we're gonna be using it for mostly resawing. So when you're pushing stock through, you want it to be a little lower, not necessarily like up here. It's a lot more sturdy. We put some smaller wheels on it. So far, so good. All right, so this really isn't a whole lot of like woodworking stuff, but this is our tool cabinet for our garage tools. This is where we have the jacks and the car tools and the um, just stuff for vehicles because we, we still live here. As much as I'd love for this entire house to be nothing but a commercial space and everything else, we still got to live here. So car tools and wrenches and stuff live here uh, in between the water softener and the water heater. So I, get, I make really good use of the dead space in here while at the same time uh, still making it functional. All right, and here's our table saw. It is a Gizli G0833P. Uh, man, I wonder what goes into these tool companies and like why they name certain tools. Anyway, it's the same one that we've had, but it can switch. You can change the motor wiring to go from 120 to 240. It's currently wired to 240, but if the landlord here wouldn't allow us to put in a 240 plug, okay, fine. We could have just rewired the motor and that's specifically why we went with this model. Yeah, I really like this saw. It's out of the box, it was pretty square and true. Um, I, what can I say? It's just a really nice table saw. We like this table saw so much, we actually went out of our way to, to take it with us on the move. We made sure that this is one of the first things that we packed into the trailer and packed boxes around. Uh, just because we like it so much. We did the modification where uh, the fence rail is moved to the right, one set of bolt holes. I'm not gonna get too far into it. You can go do some research on your own, but basically we got more rip capacity on the right side of the blade. So when you're cutting panels that are you know, in the 30 to 35 inch range, uh, you've got the capacity to do that now. Whereas on most table saws, you only get about 30 inches on the right, maybe, 15 to 20 on the left, but we never use the left side of the blade other than outfeed support. So we just moved everything over one set of bolt holes and haven't had a problem since. We really enjoy the extra capacity that that offers. Um, it's also hooked up to the dust collector via a hose on the ground. And then we detach the hose right here and we'll use that for the planer or a floor sweep or anything else that we need for dust collection on this side of the shop. So here we have our clamp wall. And you might be wondering, why the heck is it pushed so far to the left when you have so much wall space on the right? And the answer is 24 inch stud separation. In our old shop, it was 16 inches, but since this is a little older house and it's a garage, these are at 24. So we kind of had to play around with that and these long pipe clamps hanging down so far. But we decided to put the pipe clamps on the left medium sized clamps on the right here, and then some of our squeeze clamps right here. This will be where the welding table goes. We do expect it to be about 48 inches long, so we've kind of reserved this space for it. So right now, this is where we're just keeping our old stick welder that we've used in the past. After hanging out with Richard at 42 Fab and learning how to MIG weld, we're definitely investing in a MIG welder to help us with metal table legs and all that kind of stuff. All right, and this is new for us. We have a new tool cabinet. So if you remember back in the other shop, we had those long set of cabinets that I built and those were really nice, even though we never got to flush them out and build drawers for every single one of them. Um, this has been invaluable. We got it at a discount at Home Depot. It was damaged on the back. And I think that it was already on clearance, but we got a little bit more off plus a couple other discounts. Absolutely stole it from Home Depot, but it's, it's really nice. It's on four wheels. It's got a ton of nice drawers that can hold a lot of weight. This just has a lot of our um, just hand tools, screws, little jigs, you know, all the little stuff. So I recreated our tool wall, which you saw in last week's video. It's got our J&D logo that Richard from 42 Fab cut out on his big CNC plasma jet table. So thanks Richard. Yeah, but it's just got our common hand tools that we use the most. Also, yes, this is a production shop, but we also film in here. So we need a really good backdrop for videos and teaching tips and doing live streams and things like that. Speaking of which, if you've got your phone, if you're not watching, or even if you are, go ahead and follow us on Instagram. I'll wait. 
Okay, thanks for following us on Instagram. And if you come here in the corner, what you see is our finishing cart rack thing. It's just a cheap set of shelves that we have all of our finishing gear and stuff on. Um, I wanted to build a nice cabinet, but we're out of time. We gotta finish the shop and start making projects. So we started buying a few things just to help speed the process along. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary solution to a problem. That's where we're at with that. Let me back up here a bit. So the drill and driver combo that we use are the rigid drill and impact driver. They've been really good to us. I've kind of been suckered into that battery system because we have their nail or two. They don't absolutely love them, but they get the job done and my dad's got a nice Makita set and a Milwaukee set as well. They're really nice, but I don't think that they're a justification in the jump in price. I think these will get the job done for, I think, two thirds of the price. The really expensive ones do. So, but who knows? As we start doing more production stuff, that may change and you'll be sure to hear about it. All right, so we're just gonna go top to bottom through the whole cabinet and show you everything that we got. All right, so in the top here, we've just got some finishing supplies, some drill bits. Uh, pencils, spray, uh, sprayer stuff that actually needs to go. Uh, then the next drawer, this is our little um, edge banding cutter thing. A couple of angle gauges, our dowel jigs, some dowels, our little shelf pin jig, pin nailer, some chisels because I don't have a place for them yet. Over here, we have all of our screws. So again, with our consumables, we're trying to limit the number of things that we have total. So everything we use, either a two and a half inch, star drive, Torx drive screw, or a one and a quarter inch screw. Between those two sizes, we can get everything done that we need. We also have some pocket screws uh, for different various pocket projects and things of that nature. Uh, in the top drawer here, this is kind of a catch-all. We got some drawer slides, some hardware, our staple gun, air filters, and a bunch of tape left over from the move. And then right down here, this is the sanding drawer, sanding and abrasive. So we've got all of our sandpaper and Scotch-Brite pads over here with some steel wool. We've got these really nice Arbonette sanding discs, which I'll get to our sander in a minute. And then we got our old sander and a belt sander. And then down here, we got our Dremel tool, which we don't use very often. We got a new tiny little trim router. This thing is great, oh my gosh. I, the first couple times I used it just on the workbench here and a few other things, I can't believe how convenient it is just to have a tiny little router. Um, sorry, I'm struggling here. Uh, got a backup drill, Forstner bits, sharpening stones, caster. This is just kind of a catch-all down here, but that's pretty much it for that. For finishing, we use a Fuji Mini Mite 4 system. It's really, really nice. It's not quite as quiet as the Q4 or Q5 system, but oh my gosh, this is just a dream to use. I thought this whole gun assembly thing was gonna be a pain to like use and clean, and yeah, there's a little bit of a learning curve there, but it's so much faster than putting down drop cloths and paint and putting the paintbrushes away and gloves and just all sorts of stuff when you just do regular finishing. Do yourself a favor, try out a spray gun, even if it's a cheap one, just to see if you like the process. Yeah, we're never going back. Another thing that we've narrowed down is the number and type of finishes that we use. We talk a lot about sometimes when you give your customers too much freedom, they don't make a decision. So we're trying to limit the number of finishes that we use to a couple different colors and a couple different styles. For us, 90% of the time, if it's wood, it's gonna be finished with Enduravar. This is by far the easiest and best looking and protective finish that we've ever tried. Um, we haven't tried everything, but that gets the job done 99% of the time and it looks amazing. So it is a premium product, so we can still say that it's high quality, but at the same time, it's just an absolute breeze for us to use. I do not mind paying, what is it, $85, $90 a gallon for that stuff. Again, if you're interested in any of this stuff, we've got affiliate links down in the description where you can buy the stuff on Amazon. Uh, helps the channel out. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really helps us out a ton. So we'd appreciate it if you took a look at that too. All right, so this is our air filter cart. It's made from an old furnace blower motor. So that's what we have there on the inside. And then we have little attachments for all the filters all the way around. We like it a lot, it works really well. We use Jay Bates's um, plants to build this one for his air filter cart and it worked out pretty well. And right on top of it is where we keep our 12 inch planer. And so far it's been good. We kept it on casters. And this was one of the things we wanted to keep mobile because we knew we'd use it a lot. And we're like, well, it's a tool that you can keep mobile. That's not going to interfere with anything else you're doing. And for us, that was the planer. And this is Chester. 
<laughs> this is what we named our stack of sand. What, what you named. It's what I named our stack of our Merca sander, which we just got. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then this is the container with all of our Festool dominoes and then the domino itself, all stacked on top of the Festool dust extractor. We did get them all together. And it's nice because we just wheel this thing around to wherever we need it. Again, it's a good tool to have mobile, kind of like our planer. And it's been fun. We like the domino a lot, but on top of getting the shop set up, we also had to make time to like get used to it and figure out how it works and like what size dominoes we want to use and all that kind of stuff. So that's been fun, um, but yeah, we like Chester. All right, so I really want to talk about this sander. This is an amazing sander. Uh, I've seen a bunch of guys use them and I just kind of thought they were overhyped. I didn't really understand the difference between a good sander and a bad sander until I used this bad boy. Oh my gosh, that combined with the Arbonnet, it's the metal net sandpaper. So it doesn't wear out as fast. It has free, it's got a bunch of holes in it. So dust is just, there's no dust. I've never sanded and there's not just like a layer of dust everywhere. This, none of that, especially when you hook it up to a good dust extractor like this Festool one. It's really small and lightweight, guys. I, I can't put this in your hand, but it's so well balanced and the little paddle, it just, it guys, it just works and it works really well. It's got a bunch of extra features like Bluetooth and some other stuff. I'm not probably gonna play with that very often, but the sander is really lightweight, very, very powerful and with its own sanding paper, it does, um, it does a great job. If you've been following us for a while, you know that we don't take tool sponsors. There's a lot of reasons that we don't, but one of them is that we wanna be able to ditch a tool if it doesn't work well for us. And just understand when we say that this tool is amazing, like we have absolutely no obligation to this company or anything that they make. It's just a really, really nice tool. Um, and if it breaks, believe me, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, William Walker actually did a really good video on this sander, comparing it to Festool's comparable sander. And that, uh, we were thinking about getting it for a while, but that video just sealed the deal for us. So he did do a sponsor deal with them, but I'm telling you guys, this, this sander is where it's at. Okay, so here's a CNC table we built. Again, this is another project that kind of got a little bigger than we were intending it to be. It is pretty tall and wide, but I'm okay with that because I wanted an area to be able to set everything, all the screws, all the different bits. Um, I use a separate little drill to put down all of like the screw holds and everything like that. So I'm not like sitting there for five minutes, twisting them down. Um, so I will use the space, even though it is pretty large. Um, we have a little light that I put up here on the dust collection tube. So it just makes it a little easier to see. But yeah, as for the table, we put it on casters. And for us, it's gonna be good to put a lot of storage underneath it as well. That's where the shop vac goes that connects to this dust collection tube. Um, but yeah, so even though it got a little big and tall, we can definitely still use it for other purposes other than just a CNC table. So here's where we decided to put wood storage because there's really nothing above the CNC or the miter saw station. We figured it was a perfect spot. And as much as we loved our old wood storage that we built on our own at our last shop, we just didn't have the time to do it in this one. We would have loved to sit down and do it exactly the same way we did, but like we've been saying, we just need to get out and talk to people. So we bought these off of Amazon. They work pretty well, uh, just screwed them into studs. And we've got another set that we can put somewhere else along the walls if we wanna do wood storage or metal storage or anything like that. But yeah, so far this has met all of our needs. All right, and this is our miter saw station. This is not my design. This is designed from a college buddy of mine or WW underscore woodworks on Instagram. I'll put his handle right here. So uh, yeah, he came up with this awesome design. He got this Bosch miter saw before I did, but I knew that I wanted this saw for a long, long time. Just never had it. Just stuck with the 10 inch rigid one. But when we went and visited Johnny from Johnny Builds, he was selling this one. So we made a nice uh, swap there and uh, ended up with a really cool miter saw. So our stand already fit it and everything was good to go. Um, I really like this saw. It's the one where it sits flat up against the wall. So you can still have the large arm function, but it doesn't take up that much room because there's no poles that take up an extra 18 inches behind the saw. Uh, it's really nice. It's not quite as powerful as I was expecting it to be. My dad's got a big DeWalt 12 inch miter saw and it's much more powerful, but 
I need the capacity more than I need the power. But everything else is great about this stand and this miter saw. Uh, dust collection is pretty terrible, but my buddy Drew Fisher from Fisher Shop and also Mark from Gunflint Designs, they both have two interesting takes on dust collection for this miter saw specifically. So we may go with one or both of their designs at some point in the future. Right now we're just using the underneath as storage. We got our dehumidifier, we got some scrap wood storage, uh, some Romex and like wire, like we still gotta organize this stuff, but I'm hoping to eventually make cabinets or something down here. I'd really like to take the air compressor and put under here and insulate it so when it's running, it's not all that loud and it's contained and I get a uh, retractable hose reel here on the side for the workbench, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But and we talked about this in the moving video as well as the blog. Did you know we have a blog? We have a blog, it's pretty cool. We talked about this miter saw station being another priority of something we wanted to take. And yeah, it's just two by fours and plywood, but the last thing that I wanted to do when we got down here and moved in, that's its own mess of chaos is just moving across the country. But the last thing I wanted to do was to be on my hands and knees cutting two by fours out to make a miter saw stand when we got moved into the shop. So I'm really glad that we took this in the trailer as well, packed boxes around it, and we didn't even have to waste any time at all. We were just able to cut stuff down and start building instantly. All right, so this is our workbench that we built. Uh, we had some footage of it earlier in this video, and we built it pretty fast. It's plywood, two by four. This is a pulp style workbench. We didn't actually buy the plans, but we kind of just took the idea and the inspiration behind it and built our own. And so far we really like it. Um, is it the workbench that we are going to have forever? No, probably not. Um, not because we have commitment issues, but just because we know we can build one that is like way sturdier and it'll last us a really long time. But as for right now, we just need something that we can build on top of that's pretty sturdy and convenient. And that's really the purpose that this one serves. So on each side here, front and back, we've got little oval holes that we can store stuff in. So like clamps is really helpful with clamps if we just take one off and set it here temporarily, we've got some storage. So that way when you need a third hand and you're trying to hold everything here on top of the table and then you need to grab a clamp really quick, it's right here and easily accessible for you. And also on this side, we did put a long power strip so that when we're using any hand tools here on top of the table, if they're not already plugged in, we can just plug them in right here and we're not worrying about the cord being too short or stretching halfway across the shop. All right, so under the workbench is where we keep our track saw. Um, we do eventually hope to make like some cabinet doors and everything to have a little bit more organized storage underneath this workbench. But as for right now, that's where the track saw lives. Easy access, we always use it here on top of the workbench. So that's where it lives for now. So this is the Makita corded track saw. Um, we talk about it in videos and blog posts, just about everywhere, but we really like this one. And we definitely waited too long to get a track saw. It is like our favorite tool. It is so convenient. Um, after cutting down plywood on a table saw and all sorts of other crazy things, we highly recommend this one. Uh, we like it a lot. Also underneath the workbench, we keep some carpet pad. We use this for sanding. Uh, it's really nice to just lay out and put your piece on top of. Um, that way you can sand and your piece isn't gonna travel everywhere. It's got some pretty good grip. You can use towels, blankets, whatever. We were just getting carpet done in our old house and decided to keep some of the pad laying around. We're like, hmm, this will work well for sanding. And we liked it so much, we took it with us to the new shop. All right, so thanks for your patience while we finish the shop up before the tour. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you were curious from the last video, like how in the heck are they going to pull this off? Did this all in one week. This is mostly how we pulled it off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for your patience, even in the last couple of months. I know that yeah. we've been putting out some interesting content, just uh, some would call it filler content. But anyway, we're just happy to keep the channel alive and thank you so much for watching and continuing along with us. Hopefully we can start to chase down some leads next week. And if you're new to the channel, we don't do how to build videos. We do sales videos. We're running a woodworking business in the Houston area and we did a pretty successful job at running a side hustle when we had our full-time jobs in North Dakota. And we decided to come down here and take a risk. We got some other part-time jobs, so we're not completely on our own, but we're pretty much on our own having to make this business work. So 
uh, we're just gonna take what we've applied in North Dakota and try it out here. And one of the things that we've done is we've tried to share that along the way, but that can be pretty time consuming if you try to binge someone's YouTube channel. So what we've done is we've taken all of our lessons, condensed them down, really information dense, and we've put them up as programs. So if you're interested in maybe starting your own business or trying to make more sales and change your philosophy, upgrade your mindset, uh, we do have those programs available for sale and from what I understand people are killing it when they buy our programs We get yes. messages every single week of people that are quit their jobs started new businesses uh, made a car payment uh, yeah. The last couple months with their woodworking we side get hustle. We some really cool messages like I was really hesitant But they'll send us messages saying yep I overcame it like I learned how to deal with it and I learned how to now make that my strength in sales So if you're interested in that, please take a look down in the description. I know we got a lot of stuff down there Another thing is we are going to offer free plans, well not plans per se, but like snapshots of the cut list and final assembly. It's all color coded, really easy to know how it goes together, but we're going to offer plans for, what are we going to do? We're going to do the workbench, yep. we're going to do uh, the router table, we're going to do the bandsaw stand, and the CNC table. We're going to do the CNC table, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to talk to my buddy and see if he'll also throw in the miter saw station. Uh, we've got a video on that where we have the plans posted, but if we can just throw them in, in the PDF, you can download those as well and get to building. So how do they get that PDF with you all those free plans? Well, you know, you could go to jennyanddavis.com slash free shop plans. And I'll put a link right here and yeah. you can go there. It's also in the description. So if you don't remember how to type free shop plans, you can click the link in the description and go right there. And yeah, you'll get those plans. You can download them and print them out and start building this weekend. Right. We're just going to be taking our own advice. I, <laughs> there, is no, <laughs> there is no magic bullet. Like we're just going to be taking the advice we've been giving you guys. And it's a learning process too. Learning how to scale it. Learning how to do production rather than hobby or just, you know, selling to a couple people, building furniture for yourself. So if you're interested interested in, I guess, that learning curve and how it all works and switching from like the hobbyist woodworker to more production and making a business out of it. So that's what we'll be up to for a while. <laughs> But other than that, I think that's all we have for this week. Uh, yeah, go get your free plans. Check us out in the description. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in the weeks to come. Okay, bye. Bye.